Hi, I'm David Soper, technical marketing engineer supporting Cisco Intersight and Intersight's API. Today I'll be going through an overview of the API and the Python SDK. One of the best resources for getting more information on Intersight is DevNet at developer.cisco.com. You can search for Intersight and you'll find the Intersight landing page. There are sandboxes here that allow you to use DevNet infrastructure to try out Intersight and the Intersight API. And then there's also a set of learning labs where you can get hands-on with the API SDKs and our other integrations. And a lot more information out here on DevNet, including code exchange and automation exchange, where you can see a lot of examples and use cases with the Intersight API. Also from this DevNet page is a read the docs link, and this is a link out to the Intersight API docs main pages. And these pages are the comprehensive guide for the API that include an overview of the management information model and all their resources and how they're organized in Intersight, and then a great overview of the query syntax and how to use the very powerful query language in the Intersight API. Along the top ribbon, there's also a downloads link where you can get all the links for the various SDKs and integrations with Intersight, and there's an API reference. Now we'll take a look at the Intersight Python SDK and some of the operations available from it to tie in with the Python scripting language. So the Intersight SDK is available on the Python package index and from there if you search for Intersight you'll find the Intersight Python SDK and there's a description of the Intersight SDK here, how it operates, and then a full getting started section including how to install it from pip, uh, what sort of prerequisites are there, and then how to authenticate against the API, manage objects in the model, etc. So a lot of good information out here directly in PIP on how to use the API. So I'm on a system where I followed the instructions on installing the SDK from the Python package index. And I'll take a look at my Python version just to make sure that's a recent one here. I'm using 3.9 uh, SDK supported on 3.6 and later at this point and I give them additional details out on the pip related pages. Once I launch Python, use of the Intersight will be through importing the set of modules managed by the SDK. Top level of those is the Intersight module. And I can do a help on Intersight to get some information on package contents and where this is installed within my system. So the next item we'll need to do is actually configure our API interaction with the SDK. And to do that, we'll be using a set of API keys that we've downloaded from Intersight.com. The Intersight configuration class is where those API key related parameters are set up for use in authenticating with the API. And again, this information is out in the install guides of PIP in case you want to walk through those hands-on. These are all things I've actually already set up in this environment. So with my keys available, I will come in and actually do a configuration instance. And this is where I specify my public key ID, my private key path, and then some of the headers required, again, all documented in PIP. Once I've got that configuration in place, I'm now ready to go in and create an API client. And this is really what I'll use for all of my API interaction. There's a variety of examples out on GitHub that actually have credentials modules and some simplified setup for this, but here I'll walk through this just step by step. So with that API client in place, I'm now ready to go in and launch some queries against the API, and again, I'll be walking through some alarm management in the API. And again, I can always run a help on those. To get more information on the arguments and what the alarms API actually expects. With that, imported at this point, I'm now ready to create my API instance, which will be how I interact with that specific resource in the API. And I'm going to use the API client I configured above to create that API instance. 
For this example, I'm going to be doing some alarm management. So I'm also going to import some standard Python modules to allow some time-based queries against Intersight. And once I have those in, I can actually set up some just date strings that will be used in the API. So for these queries, I'm going to run in alarms. I'm actually going to pick up a search period where I go from now back seven days and get all the alarms that have occurred in that time window. I'll do some formatting of that object into a string that Intersight will accept. And then I will build out a query filter in the API's query language. This query filter is where I'm going to pick up critical alarms, so severity equals critical, and then a creation time greater than that initial date string. I can also add to my query the selection of just a handful of attributes in that alarms resource. So I'm just going to pick up the creation time description and whether or not this alarm is acknowledged. So those are my couple of query parameters I'm going to do. And now I'm going to go run this API query. And to do that, I'm going to use the get condition alarm list. And I'm going to use that query filter that I've created and that query select to only select specific attributes. And if that runs successfully, which it did, no error output, I can now come in and print that alarm query. From this alarm list, I can see one of the attributes is acknowledged, and it takes on a value of either none or acknowledged, and more, of, more information available in the API references page on that. There's a lot of other things I could do in Python to filter through these results based on code, creation time, or other attributes. In this example, I'm just going to pick up one of my results and change that acknowledge flank. Here I'm going to take the first result returned. That acknowledge setting is currently none, so this is a non-acknowledged alarm. And I'll actually change the state on that. And to do that, I will import the model for those alarms. And I will create an alarm object with the acknowledge set to acknowledged. And I'm only going to be changing that flag in the result. And then I can go in and actually do a patch to the API on a specific alarm. Here I'm going to take the MOID or managed object ID from that first result. And I'm going to go in and patch the result and change that out. And now we can come back in, just confirm that nothing else changed. So I will go back, run the query again, and I will print my alarm result again. And I see that nothing else changed in terms of that alarm, still the same managed object ID, generally the same state. Only thing changed by those operations above was actually to change this over to an acknowledged alarm. So that's a quick example of using the Python SDK. A lot more information available out at these links, developer.cisco.com as a key landing point. And then also a good example walkthrough out in GitHub at Intersight Python utils. And really this example and many more are actually published out there. For any questions, please visit intersight.com slash help. Thank you.